Hello, everybody. Welcome to our wonderful Facebook Live today. Big hello to everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a little bit of a delay there. I wasn't sure if it started, but it's definitely started now. So massive hello. Uh, my name's Teresa. I am the resident artist for Chroma Australia. And before I get started, I'd just like to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land, uh, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. Well, that's at least for my studio where I'm hosting um, this live stream today. So anyways, so as I said, my name is Teresa and today we are going to be going through some really cool, very, very fun um, sort of painting styles and techniques that are related to pop art. So in today's session, it is sort of, it is interactive, it's, it's live, so um, please ask as many questions as, as you would like of whatever sort of comes to mind as we go through um, our artwork today. So I'm just going to move these things aside. There we go. All right. So today we're focusing on pop art. Now, pop art is a very contemporary or <clears throat> modern, let's just say modern, and it's now flowed into contemporary kind of art um, style. So when you think of um, sort of pop art, think of artists like Andy Warhol or Roy Lichtenstein. Um, and with those sorts of artists, you know, they usually use subject matter that is um, sort of very commercialized, like their subject matter is things like consumer goods and products and, you know, current day celebrities and sort of cultural stuff. So I like to think of pop art as art that's related to popular mainstream culture. So for example, if you're going to be picking out a pop art subject, you know, today, right, you'd think to yourself, hmm, if I was going to showcase a celebrity, what kind of celebrities are current at the moment? So maybe you think, oh, I might do a painting of Kim Kardashian, or, you know, you might think of some other <laughs> sort of celebrity that you could do um, your artwork based around. As far as consumerism goes, you might think about, you know, what kinds of, you know, you might use products or say ads or things like that as your inspiration for your artwork. So by using these our chroma acryl products, so sort of in line with the subject matter for pop art. Um, the other thing too is I think about culture as well. I love this because I'm seeing such a trend um, emerge in contemporary painting, and that is painting memes. Because you think about it, right? Memes are such a current thing. They're really, um, you know, reflective of our sense of irony and satire. It's very contemporary um, and just really cool. So anyway, painting a meme, very, very pop art. So anyway, back to our um, project today. So we will be going through how to sort of create um, sort of really cool little pop art paint tube. So as you can see here, these are my little examples previously. I did four. See if hopefully they can all fit in the screen today. We might be cutting some of them off. And this is very much inspired by Andy Warhol. Now Andy Warhol was notorious for mass producing art and he used primarily screen printing actually in his art practice but he would repeat the same sort of motives in different types of colors so that's what I've done here with the chrome acryl um, tube today now I've sort of blended styles a little bit because it's got that Andy Warhol feeling because there's four repeated panels of the same thing but it also takes on a Roy um, Lichtenstein sort of a feeling now Roy Lichtenstein he painted um, pictures that looked like they were straight out of a comic book. So for all those DC and Marvel fans among us today, you would really love Roy's work because he was heavily inspired by the Marvel and DC works um, and really sort of classical, oh, there's classic comics. So he used these, um, he used dots in a very like cartoony kind of a style. And the dots that he used were known as Ben Day dots. Now, Ben Day dots are not necessarily something that is um, specific to pop art, but it is something that's specific to printing and illustration. And it's the technique of sort of printing color by using different colored small dots. I like to think of it like, um, you know, the, the pixels, I think you'd call them pixels, um, you know, of an old like color TV. I'm not sure if anybody, I feel like now we don't have this because everything's ultra HD. But if you think back to ever looking really closely at maybe a old computer screen or an old TV and being able to say, see the little colors, 
the Bende dots, or sort of, would use small dots of colour to create new colours in a similar way that sort of early screens or coloured screens would use little tiny lights of colours to create the image. Anyway, I digress. Dots and Bende dots. They're those cartoony sort of dots that sort of give you, a, that, that have now been really sort of, I guess, taken by pop art. And now whenever you see them, you think, oh, it's pop art, but they actually started in the illustration. But anyway, I digress. So over here, we have all these lovely little dots that kind of bring in a sense of light and also a little bit of a pattern there. So anyway, let's pop these aside and I'm going to go through how to start up. So you can actually even have a look on our chat. We've just shared a really cool little article about Bende dots, which is really cool. Alrighty, so I'm going to be starting off by using small square canvases today. So I have this little one here, just very, very cute. And the thing that I like about these little canvases is that um, you can make sets with them very, very easily, like I just showed you. So let's have a look. I am using Chromacryl paints today. Now, if you're just starting painting um, or maybe you're a teacher and you would like some really great um, student quality paints, the Chromacryl range is awesome. It's a great way of getting, um, you know, an inclusive set with all the colours that you need. Um, and you know, they're just nice, they've got a good consistency. So let's have a look what's in the box here today. So I'm going to take out the white. I'll also use a cool blue today. I was very lucky. And a cool yellow. You know, I'm just going to use all the cool colours today. I'm feeling pretty cool. So I'm going to go cool red as well. And I'll take out the black too. And I might use that black a little bit later. So pop that aside. Alrighty, so I've got my colours, which is wonderful. The other material or thing you'll need for this particular tutorial today are two brushes. Now, the two brushes I have chosen, a nice flat uh, large brush, you can see here, and also a small round brush. Then you'll need a jar of water, a rag, all those sorts of things. So pop those there. Oh, and hello to Donna. Lovely for you to join us today. Alrighty. So the first thing I'm going to do, once I've chosen my subject matter, right? So when you're thinking in a pop art style, again, think about your subject matter as things that reflect popular culture now, in the present, right? So you might think of, you know, your favorite paint brand, like our Chroma over here, with our Chroma Krills, or, you know, you might think of, you know, celebrities or memes, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, we're focusing on these beautiful tubes, which I have to say, their design is quite lovely. So I feel very happy to paint them today. All right, so thinking of your pop art, I've got a subject matter which is fits the brief. The next thing I want to do is think about what kind of style I'm going to be presenting this um, tube in. And I'm kind of going to be using a little bit more of an inspiration from those classic um, comic books. So I'm going to be cartooning fying this uh, wonderful tube. So I'm just going to place this above here and I'm using a, oh, I'm actually using a 6B pencil, holy moly. Uh, I'm using a lead pencil here and I'm going to actually sketch on to my canvas a little um, sort of, a very sort of simplified version of this tube here. Um, and thinking about those comic books as well, you can probably incorporate different like sort of lines or, you know, bits and pieces to make it seem more dramatic. I think that's what I'm getting at here. All right, so what I'm going to start with is I'm just going to firstly visualize the position of the tube. Is it going to be diagonal across my canvas? Will it be sort of horizontal like so? Or will I make it feel really dramatic and maybe have a bit of a, you know, a bend and maybe some paint coming out of it? I think I might do that. So anyway, so what I'll do here is I'm going to start off with a oval shape that represents or to start off with sort of the top of the tube, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the sides. So drawn in two little parallels there. A little wiggle, because this is going to be a dramatic drawing. <laughs> and then it's going to go like this. So it's got a little bend in it. Nice little half curve there little straight line and just a little edge so we've got though what is that no, no the little clampy bit i was so it was so fun this week i got to go to the warehouse in sydney where we actually make all of these and i actually got to see these tubes being clamped in the machine now i don't know if it's just me but i find that sort of stuff incredibly satisfying to watch so anyway 
All right, so we have, I've just put in a few little lines there just to um, represent, this does have a little bit of, yeah, it's a bit ribbed there, so we can place those there. Now, as far as the top of the tube here goes, I'm going to draw two little horizontal lines parallel to each other. Horizontal, wow, I don't, that's not horizontal at all. They're parallel. And I'm going to place in another little oval on the top and also some little curves there. Because I'm going to be drawing this tube like it's opened, right? And then, for a bit of a dramatic effect, I'm going to put in some wiggly... Yeah, you know what? Let's make this really creative. This wiggly line is representing the paint sort of being squeezed out of the tube. So I think it's really fun when you are painting with pop art, is you can make it seem quite dramatic. And really think about you know, the way that different products are represented in ads as well, because that is a huge um, inspiration for the old pop art. So there we go, we've got this lovely squish of paint coming over here, and I'm not going to include the lid, I don't think we need it. Next thing I'm going to do is maybe just put in some, a little line for the little label there. What colour? I think this is going to be a cool colour, but I'm going to actually say, yeah, cool blue. I'm going to write that in. Okay, so I've got my composition and my little sketch here. Now, when you're thinking about pop art, um, sort of the line quality that you use in your sketch is quite important because it's the line quality that makes it feel a little bit more sort of dramatic and like cartoony, right? So in this sketch, I might think to myself, well, how am I going to, you know, use lines to create a bit more of a dramatic effect, okay? So what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to put in, I like to call them like the boom pow kind of the lines, right? And they're going to start off by sort of little triangles. Ooh. So it's almost like I'm making it really explosive here. Now I say boom pow because if anyone has ever read a magazine, you can just imagine sort of the big illustrated words, boom or pow, <laughs> within sort of this spiky kind of star shape, right? There we go. Wowee. Now, doesn't that just draw your attention? That's like serious, straight, straight off the, the pop art um, production line here. Awesome. So the next thing I'm going to do here, thinking about the line quality, so I've placed in my little boom pow sort of <laughs> lines over there, is I actually think I might even sort of outline or make a really thick edge to my little fellow there. So this little halo or shadowy mark and I might just fill that in. So with this, because we are painting, all of this is going to be covered obviously in paint. But the reason why it's nice to sketch out your design first is that it helps you map out your composition. And if you have any little mistakes or, you know, little learning curves with your design, you can actually kind of, you know, sort them out. Um, the last thing here is I'm going to create a second outline on my boom power lines here. I'm really bringing in that element of line just to add a little bit more drama, a little bit more pizzazz. There we go. Holy moly, this is probably the most pop art thing I think I've ever created. Wonderful. And now because this is a live video, please hop in and ask any questions. If you have any questions about the pop art style, if you have any questions about acrylic paint, you can pop them in. Um, I think pop art as well, it's, very, it's a very playful kind of, kind of um, style and it really brings in, um, you know, it, it's playful because you can be a little bit, you know, silly about what it is that you're, you know, making or whatnot. Alrighty, wonderful. So I'm quite happy with that design and now I might think to myself, alrighty, let's plan out our colours. So when um, you're planning your colours, this is where you can take inspiration from certain things. So there's two approaches you can take when picking out a pop art colour scheme. The first approach would be to use um, classical comic books as an inspiration. So the best thing to do there would be actually to sort of type up and, you know, classic DC or classic Marvel. I don't say both of them because I know that there's a big divide between DC and Marvel enthusiasts. So I'm very conscientious to say both because <laughs> I don't want to be involved in that. Um, but anyway, so, you know, you put in your favorite old school comic 
And if you get a, a spread of that old school comic, you can then just take different little, um, you know, colors based off it and use that as your color scheme, right? The other thing that you can do as well is you can think about really popular color schemes right now. And those popular color schemes might be things like um, popular color schemes in fashion, popular color schemes in interior design, um, or funnily enough, popular color schemes in art. Like it's a thing. If you have a look on, you know, Sachi Art or any other sort of large um, gallery, you, there's definitely style trends out there when it comes to things. And if you are on trend, right, you're on trend with mainstream culture, you're a pop artist, like you are taking in those, those inspirations. So anyway, I digress. I'm actually going to be using um, sort of a more, I guess sort of, what, oh, so yes, that's the other thing, Pantone. I'm not sure if anyone here has heard of Pantone. If you have, you probably have a little bit of a background in doing anything sort of designy or um, quite a bit of art. But Pantone is like, I don't know, they're sort of like the governing body of the color world. It's very strange, but they have colors of the year, right? So you can actually go in there and they'll have a particular color, which is, you know, 2021's color of the year. And their colors really um, affect trends when it comes into design and interiors and all that kind of stuff and fashion very important so i'm going to be using a quite a trendy contemporary sort of um color scheme here and when picking out your color schemes i'd recommend limiting your color palette to about three to four colors it helps make your painting seem really sort of i guess sort of neat and tidy right so for this i've noticed a bit of a trend when it comes to blushes um like rust colors I'm not sure if anyone else has noticed this trend, but I swear everything at the moment when you look at homeware stores and even in fashion is warm tones. Everything's warm. So I'm going to go for something a little bit warmer today, which is iconic because I'm using cooler tones. So I'm starting off with cool red. Don't be, you know, confused by the coolness of these. A little bit of cool yellow. And I'll also place out some white. Oh. Uh oh. Sorry, everybody. I just realized we've got a bit of a dark screen going on there, which is not very good. Let me just see if I can get that back up. Uh oh. <laughs> Actually, Chroma, the governing body of the color world. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened to my top camera there, but it's back on now. Um, alrighty, so let's continue on. So with our color schemes, as far as planning them out, um, you can create a little color swatch on like a piece of paper, or in my case, I'm just going to use um, <laughs> the, the palette here. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually mix up my different colors, and we're going to make sure that I have a variety of sort of dark to light types of colors. So I'm going to start off by mixing up a nice orange with red and yellow. And I'll just take my palette and bring it a little bit closer so you can see just a little bit clearer what I'm actually doing. So equal parts, red and yellow. Wonderful, that's very nice and vibrant. Gives me a nice rusty orange color. So I think that might be color number one. It actually matches my jumper today. The next color I'm going to use is actually pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to be mixing up my yellow and red together to make a nice orange. This one here is a little bit more red heavy. And I also put some white in there, so I'm going to lighten that up quite a lot. There we go. All right. Wonderful. So I've got two colors to go. Um, the next color here that I'll use is, I think I'm going to change it up a little tiny bit. I'm actually going to make up a bit of a brown color. And this is a wonderful color to watch being mixed because I think brown is probably up there with one of the harder colors to mix. So there's a warm blue uh, that I'm going to be placing out. And warm blue is very important for browns. In fact, cool blue has a tendency to make like more of a greenish kind of brown and we really don't want that today. So when you're mixing browns, the way to go about it is to start off by mixing orange. So my orange here is equal parts red and yellow. Oh my gosh. 
don't know. So I'm so sorry. I'm not sure why that keeps um, uh, going black. Uh, okay, I think it's back. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, hopefully that comes back soon. So I'm mixing up the equal parts orange and and red together, and then I'm going to add in a little tiny bit of blue. Yeah, look, I'm not sure why my, my overhead camera keeps blacking out. I think I notice when I jiggle the cord that's connected to it, it seems to behave itself. So maybe it's something to do with that. So my apologies, I think we're just going to have to power on with it today. So what I've done here is I've added in just a small amount of blue and I'm actually just continuing to add really small little gradual amounts of blue into my mix. And it kind of is creating this kind of this dark, kind of blushy colour, dark blushy brown colour, I don't know, but you can see that they're all very similar, and they're very like harmonious, right? Um, and then the last colour that I'm going to make mix is actually a really ultra light yellow, I think, like yellowy colour, yeah, that's it, wonderful. So this is, I feel like, very on trend with interiors, at least in, at least in Australia, Now I'm not sure about like whether or not um, you know, interior trends are on a global scale or not, but at least in Australia, I feel like this colour scheme is literally everywhere at the moment. So, <laughs> anyways, let's have a look back to our wonderful little picture. And now we can just have a little bit of fun and think, okay, how are we going to colour this in, right? And with pop art, there's no blending, right? Everything is blocks of colours, big shapes, right? So what I may do here is I might actually start with my little blushy colour that I have over the side here. And I'm going to fill in all of the section within my big, what did I call them before? Power lines or boom, boom power, <laughs> boom power lines. Wonderful. And we've also just shared up on the chat too a wonderful colour mixing guide. So if you're starting out, um, which... You know, I feel like with the Chroma Curl range, it's a wonderful um, paint to start with. Uh, you may find the world of colour mixing incredibly overwhelming, and you're not alone there. It really does take a little bit of time to get really confident with your colours. Because there's just so much, you know, so many possibilities when it comes to colour mixing. But we do have a wonderful little guide there, so you can just hop in to the chat to see that. And if you've just joined in, I want to give you a big welcome. With all of these um, live videos, they are actually, that they're, they're recorded and you can access the recording and actually a full sort of step-by-step -step of what I've been doing um, through subscribing to our newsletter. So you can hop in and subscribe there, which is wonderful, a wonderful way of accessing, you know, good resources and, you know, at Chroma, we really just want to get you inspired and, and get you painting, get you creative. So we actually... Yeah, we've got so much stuff out there to help you on your on your journey of creativity. So the reason why pop art uses big blocks of colour is to do with the fact that um, it, it does follow the style trends of advertisements and illustrations of the 1950s to 60s, which used big blocks of plain colour. There we go. Now, one of the things I do really love about the Chroma Krill range of paints is the way that they sort of flow on, well, flow on the canvas, flow off your brush. The way that they sort of cover. Now, it's sort of interesting because at the moment I'm actually stretching this little tiddly bit of colour. So I'm actually going to have to remix it quickly. Um, but they are like quite a lovely, like medium body consistency which just means that they're thick enough to sort of give a good surface quality, but they're thin enough to flow off your paintbrush really nicely. And you can just see the kind of intensity of the colour that we're creating. Now it's quite interesting, like when it comes to student grade paints, there's, you know, no, there's definitely quite a big difference in like the qualities between, just between, um, you know, between them really. Some student quality paints, you know, they'll use really dodgy pigments and they'll put, you know, 
heaps of binder in there. The binder is the glue that sticks the paint together. And if your paint is using sort of low quality pigments and lots and lots of binder, your color is going to feel really dull. And the other thing too is that your paint is going to feel quite transparent. And I feel like most people have had this experience, especially with a yellow, right? And you'll be, you know, using yellow and you might think, oh, I really want to you know, cover this black background with yellow stars or you know, put something yellow on top of something black or something dark. And when you place the yellow one, you think, oh my gosh, it's so transparent. It's just, you know, no, um, you know, it's just no coverage at all. And that actually has to do with, um, well, two things, the quality of the pigments and also sort of the ratio of um, pigment to binder. Now, as far as any preparation that I've done with this canvas, um, this canvas was pre-primed. Um, I just pretty much just opened it out of the packet and, and started to use it. So um, when you're using canvases, it's incredibly uncommon for your canvas to um, need priming. Um, I think like 90% of you know, store-bought canvases will be primed. However, there are some advantages to applying like a gesso or just a gesso actually. Gesso would be the sort of the main thing to you, you use on a canvas. And um, those advantages come down to things like um, the texture or the tooth or such the finish of your canvas. So you could use, um, you know, a few coats of gesso if you wanted a very, very smooth finish. Um, or you could use gesso if you wanted, um, yeah, I guess if you, if you probably, maybe it was a really cheap canvas and you're maybe a little bit skeptical of sort of the primer quality and you might think, oh, you know, I really don't want my colors to, to be absorbed into the surface of the canvas. So I wouldn't mind putting an extra barrier there. That's where gesso can be really handy, but generally speaking, it's not sort of really needed unless of course you you want it, the surface to be super smooth i actually know a few artists who will use um, the technique of building up multiple layers of gesso on their canvas and sanding the gesso once it's dried so you'd repeat the practice of applying the gesso letting it dry sanding it applying more gesso letting it dry and sanding it and repeating that until you know the surface quality of your of your picture is you know really smooth and wonderful. Alrighty, so I'm kind of going ahead here and just sort of blocking in big chunks, and it's sort of nice when you start off with a color scheme like I have here. Um, you know, this process is quite is quite cathartic actually. It's quite um quite sorry, Dad to think of. You know, it's yeah, it's quite quite lovely. All right, wonderful. The other reason why colour blocks are such a you know noted style with the um, with the pop art has to do with the popularity of screen printing as a as a medium. And with screen printing, everything is you know chunky colours that are sort of overlapping each other, right? All right, so I think I might use bright orange as the background here to really make it pop. So I'm up just remixing the same colours that I mixed before, by the way. So if you're looking at me sort of diligently mixing um that's sort of what's going on here so don't feel like you've missed out on some important step i'm just simply sort of re refilling it around all righty and look if you have just joined in we do record these um particular classes so you can subscribe and get access to this because it's a wonderful little project it's also a great project to do, um, you know, if you've got any kids as well, you can sit down on the weekend and get some, do some little art projects. You can think to yourself, you know, what, what can I use as a pop art subject? Maybe you have a favorite packet of chips or, you know, I should be really saying maybe your favorite art material because, um, you know, we're, we're doing that today, which is awesome. Um, alrighty. Now I realise I'm making life quite hard for myself here and I'll tell you why. I'm using a very tiddly little brush 
to do a big surface. A little painting hack here. When you've got a large surface to cover, upsize your brush or you'll be here all day. So I'm going to upsize my brush to my large flat brush here. And you'll just see how, you know, the time that I've probably taken to do <laughs> all of this is just going to just fly past now. And you can also see as the artwork is sort of coming together, um, how effective a limited colour palette can be. Because essentially the colours that I'm using today, you know, they're pretty much all in the same, aren't they? They're all the same family. They're all different variations of orange. I must have hopped out of bed today and just thought it's an orange day. Put my orange jumper on, making an orange painting. Now, when I'm using um, this large flat brush to um, fill in this area, a little tip as far as the way to go about that is I'm using that edge and I'm actually following my brush, the long side of my brush across the long edge of the line that I'm cutting into, sort of like when you're painting a wall, I guess, you cut in first, right? Cutting in, cutting in, and then we'll fill in the section. So, and then we're blocking it in, right? So cutting in and then blocking in. Wonderful. All right, great. Now, I think the Pantone color of the year for 2021 is a particular shade of yellow. So if you're wanting to take inspiration from the holy bible of <laughs> color recommendations um you can you can use a pantone color sort of base so the color scheme that i'm using today it is also known as an analogous color scheme so analogous colors are colors that live side by side to each other on the color wheel um one of the things which is really lovely about analogous colors is that they blend really nicely together they're very harmonious and they sort of you know they just they just go together there's no way that analogous colors will ever feel like they clash they are just the opposite of clashing they are you know harmony and coexistence in its most pure form well at least in the in the field of color anyway so you can see i'm just continuing to cut in around there da, da, da. there we go Da, da, da. And I'm going to leave the sort of the outline of my boom power lines. I think I'm going to just leave that white because I actually like the drama that it's creating. You know, it's really, really expressing this, <laughs> this tube. The other reason why I chose the bright orange as the background color here is that it's the most saturated color. It's actually the most vibrant color. Back to a little bit of colour theory, so you, you thought to me yourself, oh, this is a pop-art class, but alas, you're getting colour theory too. Um, when you're mixing colours, if you place a colour that's on the opposite side of the colour wheel, in, or so if you mix two opposite colours together, they actually neutralise each other and they create, and they lower the total saturation of that particular colour. So for example, you know, let's say this orange that I'm using here. If you saw orange on the colour wheel, you would have a look and think, oh, okay, I want to mute this orange down. So I'm going to mix in the color that's opposite from it, which is also known as its complementary color. And when you do that, your orange is going to be muted. It's going to become dull. It's not going to change colors. It's just going to feel like it's a little bit closer to gray. So that's actually what I've done for these three variations here. I've added in a complementary color and it's actually muted down um, the intensity of that color. So by using that pure orange, the most intense color as sort of the background here, it actually adds in a lot of drama. The other thing that I've done is I've placed in that intense color on the label. So it's almost as if you have all the drama around the outside to be like, boom, pow, look at this tube. And then your eye will then be drawn to the label because that's the second, that's the next part that has that really bright color into it. So I've used color a little bit strategically here <laughs> um, to draw your eye into the painting. All right, now I think, now I'm just sort of looking at my, my artwork and thinking, have I missed anything? And I think I have, I think I've missed, there's a little teeny tiny bit at the bottom here and maybe the shadow too. So I'll just hop back in to that dark color. I might put in, you know, that really dark color over here. And I'm going to also create a bit of an outline that's a bit dark too. So I place that over here and under there as well. I might even go over this uh, with a bit of black. Oh, you know one thing that I should be using? Ha ha ha! 
how amazing chromacryl painting medium. Now, the reason I had that thought process, by the way, and this is something that you may experience when you're painting with acrylics. Let's say you have a tiddly bit of paint left over, or maybe you want to create some really fine lines. Adding in a little tiny bit of painting medium actually helps extend your color. So I'm placing in now a drop of my painting medium into the little scraggles or the little, little bits that are left over on my color. Oh goodness. And all of a sudden, voila, I have more color. However, one thing to note is that if you are using a lot of medium, it does increase the transparency, which is actually a wonderful thing if you're wanting to do a glazing, but not so wonderful if you want that color to be really well covering. So as I place that medium in, all of a sudden that paint just flows and glides beautifully. So the last thing I'll do before I'm finished with the blocking in stage here is I might just put, oh, actually, hold up, I've just missed a bit. Ooh. Uh, I'll just put a little bit of white um, in this white section. You might think to yourself, why are you putting paint that's the same colour of your canvas on your canvas? You might think that's just a bit silly. But there is a method to my madness, and I'll put a little drop of the medium in there just so it flows around. The method to my madness is this. Covering a white canvas with white paint increases the surface quality. So it actually has the same finish as the rest of your painting that has paint on it. So if you were going to look at this on like the side or whatnot, and you would notice that the canvas would probably be feeling really matte and the painted areas are going to be feeling really sort of maybe a little bit glossy. But the most important thing is that there will be a difference between the painted and unpainted sections of your canvas and I'm a little bit of a perfectionist so I do like there to be a level of consistency when I'm creating an artwork. And the other thing too, you probably just see as I go around here and put in my white, I didn't wash my brush, I don't think I washed my brush anyway, um, short term memory I swear, it's terrible for me, um, but that white does have a slight tint to it and it actually makes this area sort of fit in with the rest of the painting a little bit, a little bit nicer, a little bit neater. Now, I did place in a drop of the clear painting medium. Oh, sorry, my goodness me. The painting medium, sorry, not clear painting medium. Oh, a bit of a slip there. Um, is that it's enabled this colour to flow beautifully off my brush. So all of a sudden, the coverage is just delightful. The edges of my marks are nice and crisp. So I'll just show you what I'm talking about. Let me bring this really close. I want you to have a look at the way that this paint just flows off my brush. So I'll just come over here and push that over there. Wow. And the other thing to look at is the edges of the marks. So if you're looking at those edges, you'll notice that they're consistent. They're straight, they're unbroken. And because of that, I get this beautiful, sort of this beautiful feeling about that particular area. Now again, I'm scraping the barrel, so I might just not cut corners, it just makes more paint. Um, to place in the last little bits and pieces. So there we go, one here, one there. Lovely. All right, kapow, look at this. Now you might look at that and think, well, I say I'm going to be looking at my composition now. It's nice, not bad, those colours are lovely, but I do feel like it needs a little bit of something, you know what I mean? Like it just seems to need some extra kapow, right? And because we are thinking in the terms of sort of comic books and whatnot. Let's think about ways that we can sort of bring that amplification, really amplify or dramatize what we're doing. And we've got two things we can do. The first is black outlines. The second is bend day dots. So we'll start off with a black outline and then we'll move into the bend day dots. Well, sort of like a variation of bend day dots because it's not like we're making a new color, but we're bringing in that inspiration of style. So the paint that I'm going to be using here is the Chromacryl Black. Now, it's lovely. This black is just, it's neutral, it's intense. It's everything you want a black paint to be, you know? The worst thing is when you get a black paint and you think, oh, my black paint looks a bit green or looks a bit brown or it's really transparent. It's all those things that you think, oh gosh. But the lovely thing about the Chroma Creel range is that, yes, they're student um, grade, but they're medium bodied and the paints are just, they're just good quality, you know? They just, they go the distance. So anyway, I've got my blob of black there and I'm going to dilute it with a drop of the painting medium 
Now, the reason why I'm adding in the painting medium to this is that because I'm going to be painting on lines, I want this paint to flow really easily and painting medium enables that, sort of that flow. So I mix those two together. Da, da, da. And I should mention I am using a small size three synthetic round brush. It's a bit of a mouthful, but all of those things are important. The fact that it's a round brush is important because when you pick up your paint and twist your brush, da, 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 it puts those bristles into a neat point. And if your bristles are pointed, it creates beautiful fine lines. The other thing is the softness of the paintbrush too. A soft paintbrush works beautifully with um, with slightly thinner paint. Okay, so let's start to amplify this. I'm probably not going to outline everything. I just want to outline the stuff that I want to draw attention to. So at the moment, I want to draw more attention to the tube because at the moment, I feel like all the attention is on these boom power lines, right? So let's put some more attention onto the paint tube. Whoa. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm just going to be outlining that, you know, that pencil sketch that I started with? I'm just going to be outlining this. Now, if a certain colour is a little bit wet underneath and, you know, your lines start to blend in, that's actually fine. At the end of the day, this is a painting. It's not a, you know, it's not a print. So I'm just sort of coming in here and outlining some of those, some of those lines. <laughs> I realised as well, when I just sketched this, it was before I had the colour scheme, right? And I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to do cool blue because that is the colour that I, you know, that was the tube that I picked out, right? <laughs> um, oh, Donna, don't worry if you're not up to this step. With these particular class, I do race through the whole step. So you just continue on at your own pace and then watch the recording to catch up. So that's all good. Um, alrighty, so as I'm outlining this with the black, you can see that the drama is starting to happen. Woohoo! Drama, drama. Days of our lives. This paint tube is ready to go on a soap opera. It's so dramatic. Oh, sorry, I've got terrible puns. To just continue to paint and forget about my life dreams of being a stand-up comedian. No, I'm kidding. I'm just, I never wanted to do that. But anyway, so I'm continuing on with um, these little wiggly lines. And all of a sudden, this paint tube is popping. It is coming through. And the last thing to do here is to say what colour it is. Mm, I think it's still a cool. I like to say cool because, you know, it's a cool tube, you know. I'm going to say it's cool red. <laughs> and you might look at that and think, um, Teresa, that is not cool red. That is definitely a warm orange. And you're right. But you know what? It is my artistic licence here. It is the work. Cool warm. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, I think I mucked up because I started to write a W. I was talking and not concentrating what I was writing. All right, it's going to be cool warm. And you know what I'm going to do is once this is dry, I'm going to go back over and say that it's cool red. So you're just going to have to think, okay. You know, I've got a theory about um, your brain. Well, it's not actually my theory. It's a well-known theory. That you've got, you know, your right side and your left side. And the left side is your verbalization where your words come from, and your right side is your creativity and your um, sort of uh, processing a visual stimulus. And I've got, a, I've got a, 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 a sort of a theory about that where, you know, if your left side is so active because you're talking, I feel like that right side loses. I guess what I'm trying to do is justify the reason why I call this paint cool warm, but you're just going to have to roll with it. Anyway, so that's the outlining. The very last thing we're going to be doing today is placing in some dots. Now, a little hack when you're doing dots, I love hacks when you're painting, is to use the back end of your paintbrush. So I'm going to be using white because I feel like as far as one colour to add in a bit more drama to the tube is probably um, white. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad Cool Warm, warm works with the pop out. That's good to see. <laughs> so I'm going to place out a nice little blob of white there. Now the trick when you're making dots is to ensure that you have enough paint on your palette. The worst thing about it is that if you go into, let's have a look at some of these mixed colours. See how my mixed colours are very flat? If I tried to make dots using those, um, there just wouldn't be enough paint to have a good coverage in the base of my paintbrush. I've just realised something really funny about this paintbrush. It actually has a bit of a nose to it, it's pointed. So I'm going to retire that one. And luckily I've got another paintbrush here. This one here is a bit better, it's got more of a rounded edge to it which is good. You just want that round tip. And with those dots, I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in my large blob of acrylic, my large blob of white. Oh, 
I'm in that. Um, so let me bring this really close to show you exactly how you do it. Because you want to actually um, sort of make sure that that whole bottom edge is very well covered in paint, right? So as I lift that off, you can see the little peak. I'm going to bring that super close, a little peak of paint, so you know that there's a large amount of it there. Now, with that, we are ready to get a little dotty here. And I'm going to start to build up a very even pattern of dots on the paint tube itself. One of the things about the Bend Day dots is that they are very geometric, right? So I'm starting off and I've done one line. And one thing you might notice about my line of dots, and this is me getting a little bit tricky here, let's bring it up nice and close, is that my dots do get slightly um, smaller as they get further down the tube. Now, you might think, how did you do that? Well, I'll tell you, I'll let you in on my secrets. Um, I adjusted the pressure of my hand. So the first dot was with a very heavy pressure. And then the next dots, I started to lighten the pressure. And then you get this wonderful change of different sizes. Now, where it gets a little tricky with this is that you need to be consistent. Bend A dots is about consistency and being quite geometric about it. To give you that really like, I guess, what is it, like a graphic, like almost graphic art. When I say graphic art, I don't mean violent. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's digitised, all right? I have to give you that, uh, you know, say that because I've used that description a few times and I have had people say to me, um, why do you use the term graphic when you're talking about your artwork? <laughs> your artwork is very peaceful and relaxing. It's not, you know, um, and that, you know, that's why graphic. And that's the same reason why, you know, you have graphic designers or graphic artists, for example. It shows that it's in the digital platform. Okay, so with these band-aid dots, I am just following some straight lines. <laughs> Attempting to, anyways. It's going to be a bit of, you know, artistic license here. But I am keeping the dots on the edge of the tube quite thick and the dots um, as they get further down the tube a little bit lighter. There we go. Da, da, da. So you might, if you're a real perfectionist or good at spotting the differences, you might see, you know, one or two areas where I've broken the mould slightly, but generally speaking, it's quite consistent. And that consistency is incredibly important when you are creating this pop art style. So the last thing I'm going to do here is place some more dots across the top of the tube of paint. Da, da, da. And then try to keep those in a nice grid, consistent as possible. There we go, wonderful. And I'm going to say that's a wrap with this artwork. It feels very pop art. It has drama. It feels like it's sort of very inspired by cartoons. And that um, style has been achieved by two ways. Firstly, having this nice boom pow kind of a, a shape, as well as having, you know, big colour blocks, black outlines, and lastly, the, the sort of incorporation of the band-aid dots. So those are really my style tips as far as, you know, creating a pop art sort of artwork um, for today. So, alrighty, that's it for me today. Um, I hope you're all feeling very creatively inspired and ready to go on and make some really cool um, sort of pop art themed work. Um, and yeah, until next time. Alrighty, take care and see you later.